Good day, and welcome back to chemistry chemistry videos. <laughs> we're doing a calculation, so we might as well call it chemistry calculations. Okay, so today we're going to continue our series with the pH calculations in terms of doing part B. So the last time we did part A, it was a long video. <laughs> in fact, so long I had to walk over there and like reboot the screen. So, you know, when that happens, you know it's been long. Part B, we're going to do right now. Hopefully it'll be a little shorter. I hope. Okay, so part B. In terms of part B, uh, the first part we did an acid. We had an initial amount of an acid. We did an acid ice table. Part B, our initial amount is of the base. And how can I tell? Well, this one matches this one, and we've already labeled that as the base. And in the first part, I talked about why that was the base. <clears throat> so this should be a little bit easier of an ice table to work with, right? If it's of a base, then it's going to be like the initial reaction that I did when I actually reacted this to figure out what this acid was, the protonated version of pyridine. But if I want to do a generic version of a base, then what I can do is I could just say, okay, I have a base, the base in this case, I'm just going to call A, and when I react that with water, it's going to pluck off one of those H's and form my acid, and then it's also going to form OH minus, right? These are all aqueous, everything that has a, uh, an ion is an aqueous entity. And this can be my generic version of an equation for any time I have to deal with a base, okay? Um, notice that also, because this will be important when we get to electrochemistry, that the overall charge of the reactants and the overall charge of the products is the same. We have an overall minus one on both sides, which is actually important for, for when we get there. Okay, to electro electrochemistry in all of its glory. All right, so let's do a nice table with this. Because we have a Kb, the equilibrium amount, we have an initial amount of the base. We're going to do an ice table based off of the base. All right. Ice tables, you begin with your initial amount. My initial amount in this case, this is going to be essentially my A minus, right? My initial amount, again, is 0.100. I do not need to consider water because water is a liquid. Liquids and solids are eliminated from both the K expression and the ice table. If I started off on the reactant side with 0.1, then I'm assuming that I started off with zero on this side, on the product side. Okay. C is the change in terms of X. It's the number of, it's the coefficient numbers of X's. And you're going to subtract it from the reactant side, add it to the product side. Here we go. Subtract out minus x here, add in plus x to both of these. And then E is just the summation, right, the adding of I and C. So add 0.1 and minus x, you get 0.1 minus x. Add 0 and plus x, and you get x and x. The K expression, and this is the, for the KB now, because we're talking about a base, we have HA. Right, the coefficients to the power, uh, sorry, <laughs> wait a second, I'm saying it fast, too fast perhaps. The pa the, this is the products of this equilibrium to the power of their coefficients over the reactants to the power of their coefficients. Water is not considered. Let's fill in this, since this is all considered to be at equilibrium. Let's fill in these concentrations that I've written out with their equilibrium line, whatever's written there, right? So for HA, we have X. For OH minus, I have X. And for A minus, I have 0.1 minus X. This should feel very familiar to the last time, the last thing we did. Okay, let's go ahead and erase this. And let's get ourselves in the place of being able to solve for x. Now, 
the last video, we talked about when you can make the assumption when, when you can't. What we do is we make, you can either use the 5% rule, which has gone over, if that pretty much is described in every book I've ever seen that's general chemistry. If you could also find the 5% rule uh, for making assumptions in, uh, probably online, you could just Google it. Pretty easy to find. Just put 5% rule, no big deal. 5% rule for equilibria expressions or something. And that would probably work really lovely in your favor. But here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my little moment where I just compare the, compare the initial amount in scientific notation. That's going to be 1.00 times 10 to the negative 1. And I'm going to compare that to the KB, because this is the KB expression. And that's 1.50 times 10 to the negative 10. And you look at that, and wow, can we say way smaller? When you look at the exponents between these two, it needs to be, the difference between these two exponents needs to be three or more to make the assumption. This is nine. You could totally make the assumption here. And the assumption is to eliminate x from the denominator. And so what I'm going to have is I'm going to have 1.50 times 10 to the negative 10 equals x squared divided by 0.1. Life is so much better when you make the assumption. Although, I really like the quadratic equation. Don't get me wrong. So if you have to use it, it's not the end of your world. Okay? You multiply both sides by 0.1, you get 1.50 times 10 to the negative 11th equals x squared. So x must equal the square root of 1.50 times 10 to the negative 11th, right? And I got a cool number like, let me do this one more time with some parentheses around it. I got a cool number like 3.87 times 10 to the negative sixth. Is that right? Let me make sure that I have this in scientific notation. Yeah, 3.8729 blah, 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 blah. Okay, we know that x here is equal to not the concentration of the H plus, but the concentration of the OH minus. Look back over here. It was either the concentration of the acid as a whole thing or the OH minus. We need the OH minus part. Okay, so the question here is if I make, uh, if I take the negative log of 3.87 times 10 to the negative sixth, what am I going to get? All right, because that's my natural inclination in this chapter is to take the negative log of that sucker. Why not? Good times, right? We take the negative log of all kinds of things and we're finding P's all over the place. PH, PKA, PKB, and indeed, if you take the negative log of this number, you're going to be finding the pOH, not the pH. Remember, when you take the negative log of a value, you're ta it's basically the p of whatever the concentration of that thing is. And since this is an OH, you're finding a pOH, not a pH. All right, I'm done with the squeaky green. Whew, that's some squeakiness. So this is the negative log of x, and here I take the negative log of 3.87 times 10 to the negative sixth, and you get a pOH value equal to 0.5. is a lovely answer. And you ask yourself, is that what I want in the end? Can I just write that down? Am I done? And the answer is, no, of course you're not done. Because I didn't ask for the POH, I asked for the PH. So you got one more thing to do on top of everything else you've done. You've done so much, but let's do one more thing. And that one more thing is that you need to use one little handy dandy equation it's based off of the KW expression 
in the concentrations of H plus NOH minus, and this is the equation you would want. pH plus pOH equals 14. So if I want the pH, all that I have to do is subtract the pOH from 14. And so the pH here is going to be 14 minus 5.41. And you get a cool number like 8.59. And that's our answer that we're going to put over here. pH equals 8.59. And we expect this to be basic because this is a basic solution. All right. Until next time, we'll do part C. Adieu.